I am Helios5868. I am a skinny atheist. And this morning, I guess you could call it this morning, it is 3 in the morning, 3.37 in the morning, I will be destroying 5.30. I mean, why are we still focused on this guy? Well, it's because he's so much easy, fun to pwn. I mean, really, it doesn't take any challenge to deal with him. It doesn't take any challenge. So anyways, um, put out a video, basically talking about his exchanges with Sora to Yuki. Basically, he they've been talking for a bit. He challenged Sora to Yuki to a debate about uh, how atheism is allegedly irrational, and then he challenged him to a counter-debate. Um, in case you're completely not aware, Chad Elliott has this whole Elliott argument, which is apparently a rip-off of another argument, which I, I, I don't remember the argument off the top of my head. I need to look it up, but the Kalam cosmological argument. Um, whatever. Um, the point is, um, Chad Elliott is confused as to why um, this debate should even be occurring. Why, why debate over, you know, uh, why debate when that argument would prove that there must be a god? And the reason is because, Mr. Elliot, your argument is fundamentally flawed in that respect. I'll show you what I mean in a moment. So let's walk through the Elliot argument. The Elliot argument basically states, number one, it is impossible for the universe to come out of nothing, for the universe to have sprung out of existence from nothing. Accepted. Nothing can be created out of nothing. Two, the universe could not be eternal. I don't quite agree with this one to all extent, but the fact of the matter is, the Big Bang Theory is very likely. It's, it's very likely that the universe came into existence. We have the background radiation, and the red shift of various planets. So, yeah, it's quite likely that the universe came into existence at a certain point, which leaves one option. The universe had a cause. Yeah, completely right. And yet here I am still an atheist. What's going on here? Well, look at what actually comes out of that the universe had a cause. Not that there's a God, the universe had a cause. Well, if you're a Christian, you might be asking, what's the difference? The difference is the size of the Western Hemisphere. I mean, the difference is huge. The difference is miles apart. I mean, that's hugely different. Why? Because this conclusion does not rule out an occurrence extra universally that caused the universe to come into existence. I'll give you an example, since this is a little comp little weird to accept. Brian Greene. He is a string physicist. He has a series on uh, PBS and a series of books, The Elegant Universe and the Fabric of the Cosmos. I own both of them. He is an awesome dude. Anyways, he explained it like this. He explained a uh, possibility for a uh, for the universe actually coming into existence, what the Big Bang could have been, in the context of what's called the brain world. Um, brain world idea, I guess. I don't even know if that's a, if it's a hypothesis or a theory or what. But brain world, the, the idea that the universe is a three brain. If you don't know what brains are, if you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry. You, you don't have to know. You, you don't have to know. I do recommend reading up on it because it's kind of cool. But, and you know, those books, uh, The Elegant Universe and the Fabric of the Cosmos, really do a very good job explaining it. And they're very easy to read and they're very interesting. But anyways, basically, he says that um, through math that I don't understand, um, it is possible that the Big Bang was actually a collision of two three brains. Or maybe not even necessarily three brains, I'm not sure how it works exactly. Two, a collision of two three brains, and that caused the universe to come into existence. 
Now, um, I'm not 100% sure on the details, I really don't know, and it's kinda late, so, I mean, I'm not gonna deal with it, I'm just not. But the point is, it's a possibility for the universe having come into existence, having a cause. It's not a god. You see, this is where the Eliot argument fails. It fails where so many other arguments do. It's because it's not an argument for God at all. You can accept the Eliot argument, and there's still no God. Why? Because Chad Eliot's argument is not for a God, it's for the universe having a cause. What Chad Eliot has to do is what no Christian apologist has ever been able to do. You have to, in his terms, get a touchdown. You're, you're on the 10-yard line, but you can't, you can't get a touchdown. Why? Because you have to overcome one simple fact. It is impossible to prove a God's existence. Either your God is one of two things. One, internally inconsistent. Well, three things. One, internally inconsistent. This is the God that basically is both, that requires having two contradictory features. You know, loving all humans, yet killing all of them in a flood, per se. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, Noah's Ark, hint, hint. Two, a God that does not actually work with reality. For instance, a God that has in his book references to corners on an oblate spheroid planet. Oblate spheroid, for those of you who don't know, is basically a sphere kind of squished. Note that spheres do not have corners, and when you squish a planet in that way, that it looks in that way, it doesn't have corners either. So, yeah. So, yeah, a god that's internally inconsistent, a god that is inconsistent with reality, or three, a god that cannot is an unfalsifiable hypothesis. Impossible to prove and impossible to disprove. Why? Because it doesn't have any effect on reality. Because it doesn't matter whether he exists or anything. it doesn't exist. Okay? And Chad Elliott can't do this. He just can't. This is why Sora Yuki decided, called on him to have a debate where the Elliott argument is accepted to show this very fact. The fact of the matter is, it doesn't matter whether the Elliott argument works or not. It's completely flip and irrelevant. It doesn't matter. Why? Because it's not an argument for God. I mean, what do you do after that? So the point I'm trying to get to is that no argument can be accepted for, you know, proving atheism illogical unless it proves that a divine creator of the universe is more probable than any other uh, possible explanation. Until that time, it will never be illogical to be an atheist, especially now that material explanations, you know, explanations that are empirically proven by science are actually more probable than a divine creator. If you can't make the divine creator more probable than naturalistic explanations, then you can't prove atheism to be irrational. You just can't. It's that simple. You just can't do it. Why? Because it isn't irrational. Not accepting the existence of a divine being without some serious proof is not an irrational stance. It's completely rational. It doesn't, you know, if you want to make it, if you want to cast that as irrational, you can't do it. It, it isn't. Okay? So anyways, it is almost 4 o'clock. I need to go to bed, and I also need to deal with this stupid paper. So, yeah. Um, whatever. Peace the fuck out. I'll use the amazing atheists thing. Sure.